had the pleasure of talking to you about your own mental health, quote unquote, journey. And something that stuck out to me was the fact that you grew up in a home where mental health wasn't really uh, talked about that much, at least not explicitly. I was wondering if you could tell everybody here a little bit why you think that might have impacted you growing up. My parents were very open with me, but I definitely didn't have the tools or the language to even understand kind of beyond like good and bad right and wrong I had grew up kind of in a religious setting where that was like very much emphasized so then sometimes when I would be angry or sad it would be like oh yeah anger is bad sadness you got to figure that out you got to fix it so I and I, I struggled with those feelings a lot as a kid but felt like I had to kind of keep it to myself in some ways because I wasn't always sure even how to talk about it I didn't have the language or the tools I have like thoughts about my childhood that are very loving like I think of it fondly but when I really think about digging deep into those mental health conversations they just didn't exist so yeah and that is something that has affected me as an adult but I kind of had to learn how to deal with those feelings and to understand that like you can do things that that maybe are considered bad but there's not one thing that is one way or the other that, that just mm -hmm. fi finding that nuance beyond like the binary of that was something that I felt like I had to discover on my own I de definitely was not taught that as a kid yeah and just figuring out what's right for you mm -hmm, definitely yeah. that was a big thing for me as well growing up it was kind of difficult to figure out how to even talk about my emotions Mm -hmm. because I didn't know how to properly talk about them. So I would talk about them in a way where my friends would be like, oh, okay, Sadia, are you doing okay? Right. And I'm like, I'm fine. I don't, know, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm doing just okay. <laughs> mm. So that made it a little bit difficult. Yeah, definitely. And, and been, being in an environment like that, like I went, I went to church with and had like friends that were kind of in the same boat that didn't really know how to talk about it. So only when I like expanded my horizons kind of as an adult did I realize that there was different ways to discuss your feelings. <laughs> and expressing yourself. Yeah, totally. Also, I forgot to mention right in the beginning, I love the, like, the green, like the neon. I'm loving it. Thank you. Thank you. I was you. going to play with color and then I like sat at my table and I was like, no, no, no. Go oh, no, you color. have a very beautiful, bold brow going on right now. Oh, yes. No, you've oh, got it. Stop it. You and I could talk about makeup so much <laughs> later on. <laughs> I was hoping we could hear the first song. Yeah. I get my own little concert here. How cool is this? <laughs> this song is called Beats. And, and this song kind of goes <laughs> into my own kind of self-talk, my conversations with myself. And, and I mean, I find with music and music has really helped me to be able to express myself. And I feel very lucky that I have gotten to have that because I feel like I would have been very lost without it. So this is a song that kind of is just me talking to myself, all the different voices in my head that I experience. Um, you are receiving so. so much love for this song in the comments right now. Yeah! Mason's Sorry. energy right now is wild. I'm loving it. Whose energy? Mason. He's saying, I, yes, I love this song. Oh, okay, <laughs> let's do it. We're going to do it. Anyway, any day, I wish I was Anyone else instead of myself, I wish I was And anyway, any day, I wish I was you were playing ahead of time but I was like crossing my fingers this <laughs> oh my gosh 
Thank you. Oh, so God. Mm, thank you so much. No, it's fun to sing. Oh, my gosh. I have not just, like, sang out like that in a while. Can you tell us more about your process on navigating your mental health? And how has oh, that yeah. been going for you? Oh, it is ongoing. Definitely. <laughs> I just started seeing a new therapist. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's ongoing for me. I'm constantly feeling like, even as an artist, that part of my job is to look into it within myself so that I can be of better service to others in that way. But I feel like all of us have that responsibility to ourselves to look into our own mental health. I've always felt that way. And I, yeah, I mean, my journey has been all over the place. I've gone through phases of looking in the mirror and feeling like you are amazing. And then I wake up some days and I'm like, you're fine today. But I feel like that's something that I also advocate is, is that like, that is okay. In the journey to self love, you don't have to look in the mirror every day and be like, you're hot. Like some days you might not feel that way. And that is okay. Because you can't be on a plateau high of just feeling good every day, all day. I have definitely gone through my self-discovery in real time and I'm generally pretty open with people online but then there are also times where I retreat and I feel like especially lately I have felt like it's not necessarily my place to be as present online actually because there's so many more important things going on in the world your own personal mental health is very important and that's your own journey and I feel like lately I've had a lot to learn from other people and other like leaders and people that kind of know what they're talking about. I'm not an educator. All I know is that I think it's important to search for ways to take care of yourself. And for me, that's definitely through music. I try to keep a journal. I am seeing a therapist. I try not to be too hard on myself, but also I think it's important to push yourself to think about why you get angry, why you get sad and don't just let it be feel all your feelings and then think about it, process it, talk to people about it and try to get to the bottom of it so that you can, next time those feelings come up, you can have tools and understanding on how to navigate. Does that make sense? I feel like it totally really makes feeling. sense. Yeah. And just finding what works for you. So in like, in my experience in high school, I went to a therapist and mm -hmm. it was a terrible experience for me. Right, it did totally. not work. Uh-huh. And then I tried other forms of self-care. And for me, they worked so much better. Mm. And now as five years later, like Sadia five years later, I'm thinking again about returning to therapy. And it now might be something that works for me. Definitely. That's so interesting too, because I was also not taught that you go and talk to people in that way. Mm -hmm. and, and kind of like the thought of like, uh, needing medication or needing to talk to people was also like a, a bit of a taboo mm -hmm. subject growing up. And that's something that I've had to really work past my kind of biases against certain things that I didn't, don't even know that I have sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I definitely, I've, I've seen like a counselor other times in my life, but then I often, I feel like my tendency is to be like, I'm strong, I got this. And then I will tell everyone else in the world to go to therapy. I'll tell everyone else to talk to people, but then in myself, I'm like, but I kind of know where I'm at. And yeah. I think I have definitely had a, an awakening in the last like year or so that it's like, okay, I'm definitely uh, trying to be helpful when I tell other people to talk to people, but I need to take my own advice. You are obviously very passionate about the self-love movement mm -hmm. and quote unquote, as you said in our first meeting, feeling all your feelings. Yes. And you think you mentioned it today actually as well. So why is that message specifically so important to you? It's important to understand that anger can actually be used to help you to be helpful. If you discover how to use it to serve what you're trying to say to serve yourself, there's no kind of wrong way to feel in this mental health journey. So I'm just such an advocate of like, okay, so you're feeling really terrible. You don't want to get out of bed. Don't deny that. Don't try to say that it isn't happening because that, if that lives within you, that is just going to keep coming up in different parts of your life. At least how I, this is, this is how I have felt when I have tried to deny that in the past that I'm okay because 
being okay with such like an important thing to me for a long time. Oh yeah. Being someone that other people could lean on has been such an important thing for me in, in the past that I have to be okay. Everything's fine. I'm happy. I feel joy. Everything's great. And, but then it can get really confusing when those feelings of discomfort and sadness and anger come up because I, I don't know what to do with them. I put them all in the wrong category like in the category of like we shouldn't be feeling that and I just feel like as I have grown and as I've learned uh how to kind of cope in different situations the thing that I feel like has helped me the most is just when I feel those feelings of sadness I I sit with them I think about them I don't try to just get through I don't try to just get around them like I work try to work through them and that doesn't mean that they're never going to come back, but it does mean that you can kind of take that opportunity to learn something about yourself and to help yourself rather than just being uh, afraid of those feelings and, and never like listening to them. And because that's a part of yourself that, and that's a part of yourself to love just as much as the part of yourself that feels good is a part of yourself to love. It's all you. I love that. <laughs> I love, love tonight. I've said love so many times. Love it! <laughs> yeah. A huge part of it is embracing yourself and embracing mm -hmm. who you are. Continue to feel it all and talk to your friends, talk to your family. That's why I'm so glad that y'all exist as an organization as well, because it can be really hard to know where to go. So I feel like the internet can be a really a uh, difficult place to navigate, but also a really powerful place to share information and mm -hmm. to gain uh, insight. So it's great that y'all exist for that purpose as well. So yeah. Thank you.